Hi, this is Dr. Vincent again with another LDI-based topic, this time about herpes viruses. So that includes the chickenpox virus, varicella, varicella zoster virus it's called, if, if you weren't aware of that, and also herpes simplex type 1 that tends to give you cold sores as the reactivation herpes simplex 2 that gives you genital herpes in general. Those two can cross over once in a while, but that's pretty rare. Um, most people have had herpes simplex type 1. More than 90% of us have that by adulthood but only a, part, a portion of those people will get cold sores reactivating. Genital herpes, most people who have that one, HSV2, will get outbreaks periodically, but the frequency of outbreaks with either of these is very different from person to person, right? You might get a herpes outbreak or a cold sore every couple of weeks routinely and end up taking suppressive antiviral drugs all the time to prevent it, or you might only get one once a year, just randomly when you're like super stressed or some other factor. Stress does play a role. And that is one of the clues that gave me the idea that maybe we could treat these things with LDI years ago, probably five or six years ago, um, because stress will bring them on. That suggests there's an immunological relationship there. When you first get infected with one of the herpes viruses, you have a very different, broader, sicker kind of syndrome, if anything. Most of us who acquire herpes simplex 1, for example, the cold sores one, don't have any symptoms at all. Or you might feel like you had kind of a minor cold, sore throat kind of thing, uh, crummy for a few days, and then it just goes away. The virus gets into your brain nuclei, your nerve nuclei, and just stays there. And then you may or may not experience reactivations, uh, cold sores periodically sometime after that. Maybe not. Or if you have a really rough first, you know, primary infection with herpes simplex 1, you can get horrible blisters in your nose, your mouth, all over, even in your eyes. For some people, it can cause encephalitis and occasionally kill people, in fact, with the primary infection. But then once your immune system kind of gets a handle on it, puts it in a little herpes jail in your nerve nuclei, all you get going forward in life is generally a cold sore periodically. If you end up immune compromised, you know, you end up with AIDS or uh, cancer therapy or uh, rejection, anti-rejection drugs for organ transplant or something, you can end up with horrible, overwhelming herpes outbreaks that cover large areas of your body instead of one little focus thing. It's very different. And those people have to take antivirals all the time to prevent that from being just overwhelming. Um, the chickenpox virus, we all know... Well, nowadays, people don't know what chickenpox looks like, the actual illness, because we've had a vaccine for 20 or 30 years now. But if you're my age or older, you probably got chickenpox. You get a fever and some blisters show up here around your body and they itch and they hurt and then it all resolves within a week and life goes on. But the varicella zoster virus stays in your body. And it can reactivate also some time in the future under some period of stress or what have you. And you can get what they call shingles, where the blisters show up again, but only in one band, one little belt on one side of the body. It doesn't tend to cross the midline, again, unless there's something wrong with your immune system. And really painful burning sensations. After having that, some people will have what's called post-herpetic neuralgia, which is where after the herpes reactivation, you have nerve pain. That's what neuralgia means. That goes on and on potentially forever. And they take all kinds of drugs, try to control that pain, and very, very little do they work. So um, one of the great things I've discovered using LDI is that the, like, we can treat those chronic issues. People who have had recurring shingles outbreaks, we can use the varicella LDI to stop that from happening. People who have recurring cold sores, no matter how frequently they tend to show up, the herpes simplex 1 and 2 LDI we have tends to stop that from happening with a very, very high degree of success. We can dial in the dose cautiously over time and then find the one that just keeps it from keeps the reactivations from happening. Unless you have some real severe episode of stress again or something, you can have a breakthrough episode once in a while that's usually milder, a lot less frequent, and easy to get rid of with an antiviral course. So... For the people who only have one cold sore per year, this isn't going to be a big deal to you. But if you have tend to have a cold sore a couple of times a month and you end up taking daily antivirals to suppress it, we can do a better job with this, actually, it turns out. Um, the people who have post-herpetic neuralgia, constant electrical burning pain where they had shingles or perhaps in their face due to the herpes simplex virus, that we can get rid of also with a very high degree of success, which is really exciting because those people are miserable. It's horribly painful. So it's exciting to be able to work with, with that. Um, and that's the gist of it. It's important to understand that logistically, you know, 
everybody's a little different. Like if you have infrequent cold sores, for example, I would I tend to send people a herpes simplex dose to have on hand, the starting dose, usually 6C or so. And whenever you have your next one show up, that's when you take it. And you see if we can make it go away quicker or take the doses right around that time when you have a symptom to track. But if you have symptoms that occur frequently, like if you have outbreaks of cold sores every couple of weeks, we can just give you a dose and then watch to see if you don't get your cold sore on schedule and how long you go without one. And we can go about it that way. So logistically, we figure it out case by case based on your particular circumstance. If you have post herpetic neuralgia and the pain's present all the time every day, that's easy. We can give you the doses and progressively go through them stronger until it starts to take away that pain for you. But if you or somebody you care about suffers with one of these issues, you know, the recurrent cold sores, genital herpes outbreaks, or, uh, you know, shingles or any post herpetic neuralgia from any of these, then that's something we can treat with a very high degree of success. The other thing I would mention is it's important to understand that LDI does not get rid of the virus. You still have the virus in your body. It's going to be there forever. These are DNA-based viruses, and they have a happy little splice point in your nuclear genomic DNA. So when you get infected with one of these, it finds that little home in your nuclei of your cells and wedges itself into your DNA and stays there forever in a latent phase. That's why it's the gift that keeps on giving, right? Or it's why you can get shingles at age 70 when you had chickenpox when you were five years old. It's there forever and it's never going anywhere. And you'll still be potentially contagious too. If you have any viral shedding when you're asymptomatic or if you do get a cold sore outbreak or a shingles outbreak, you'll shed virus. So it's important to understand that LDI doesn't get rid of the virus and it doesn't make it impossible for you to transmit to somebody else. And we can, what we can do is we can stop the misery and the suffering and the reactivations you experience of you know, episodic herpes lesions coming out. But that's definitely worth doing because it's pretty miserable when people have those problems. Thanks.